What's going on, everybody? <clears throat> Golly, here we go already. <laughs> your, I'm sorry. Text messages on my damn watch. It's your boy to give you a review for uh, Love Hip Hop Atlanta. Uh, just going to dive into it. Hopefully, this is a quick review. I don't know. Y'all know I get along with it sometimes, but we still way at Jamaica. I think Jamaica, Caribbeans, they still on fucking vacation day. Damn, things all up in the way and shit. I can't be great, but <clears throat> they still went for the day at. They're talking about Carly's little situation of, you know, did she fuck Jock? Her, you know, loving Jock, still have a relationship, but then, you know, date Caesar. But she did say, I am dating Caesar. And it, this is one of which, like, everybody has a different definition of what dating is. So it is what the fuck it is. Mimi gets a phone call from Eva. Apparently, she been around Jocelyn, Mimi mad. So now Mimi is on a plane going back. Now we're back in Atlanta, so I believe the boy name is Logan. He meets up with Rod, and they start talking about the baby. And Rod whole thing, he trying to figure out, you know, what's good, you know, are you lying? And he was like, well, fuck, I was at the fucking apartment, the bughead. Well, so now I was like, okay, fuck, maybe, just maybe, you know, somebody been lying. And then the baby even comes up, <clears throat> and he was like, well, fuck, it could be mine. He was like, when last time y'all smashed? He said, I think, I would just go with October 15th. I think that was the latest. And, you know, Rahul right, thinks baby was born the 16th. So let's just do the math here. October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Uh, eh. If it. If it. But you never know. It could work. So, with the math that he did. November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Never mind. Well, it depends. How you do the math, if you include October, but if you don't include October, then we get to June, whatever, when the baby was born. It could, could not be his blog saying that it ain't his, but whatever. But now the wheels are turning, and I think it's more or less that Rod's feeling like, I can't believe that um that she uh then cheated on him or was fucking around. <laughs> Who the fuck cares? Uh, now, Stevie is, meets up with uh Mimi. Of course, we got mad, Mimi. And Stevie pretty much was like, well, I did not have her around, Jocelyn, but maybe one of his daughters did. But now Mimi mad, about to do the whole core thing, and that's where the fuck we at. Mimi, she needs to come the fuck down. I swear she needs to come for down for her motherfucking titties first. I'm concerned for her and those motherfucking jugs that she got on her motherfucking chest. Okay, before we formally get to the second part, is I have a question. Who the fuck want to watch Pork and Beans and Hot Dogs be on fucking damn Love and Hip Hop Hollywood? I can't. I can't. Next thing we know, they're going to have fucking kibbles and bits on there. I can't do this shit. Okay? Look. look. First, let me say this. If my boo thing on these ain't back on there, I ain't, fuck, I ain't fucking... I, I ain't reviewing the shit. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. I damn... I'm at the point I want to watch shit because we got fucking Pork and Beans and Hot Dogs on there, but I digress. I digress. Back to our uh, schedule programming, okay? So, yeah, Carly and Dom still on vacation, and, you know, they're talking, and, of course, Dom brings up uh, Jock and that whole thing, and Carly's like, you know, she, you know, she still, well, she will always have a place in her heart for him, but he's not quite mature enough to be with her. That whole thing, whatever. And they start, and I ain't even gonna talk about the rest of that because I ain't got shit to do with me. Moving on, back in Atlanta, Jocelyn meets up with Stevie. She says to Stevie that she wants to be on his label. Uh, he says to her, well, I do have somebody on there. Now, Jocelyn, quick with, is it a male or a female? He's like, well, it's a female. And she's like, okay, well, you gonna have to drop her. He's trying to let her know, like, this shit is contractual. Pretty much meaning, like, first and foremost, for the most part, he can drop her if he wants. With a lot of our record companies, they can drop an artist for no fucking reason. Unless it's in his contract, unless it's in her contract that there's some type of severance pay, then yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Now, Jocelyn proposes to Stevie. Now, Stevie, ha I'm sorry, Stevie had proposed an idea of Bonnie Bella and her moving in. 
She and then she said no. Now she is physically proposing to Stevie, talking about setting a wedding day, which we already knew they weren't fucking married. But setting a wedding day, I guess, to make it official. I guess she wants that moment Scott Young wedding and whatnot. And pretty much Stevie's thinking it over. And Jocelyn, pretty much, and he even brings up, to make this work, you're going to have to apologize to my doors because they still feel some kind of way about what you said. She going to apologize. So we're going to see how that all works out. All right, so. <clears throat> me, 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 Swift, I believe you pronounce the girl's name, what, Estelita, and Mimi brings up the trip, and what happened on the trip. Now, I didn't know they was friends, like, I didn't know they was friends, we know this reality television, and she gotta find somebody to fucking feel with, she ain't got a motherfucking storyline, I know this, but I ain't know those friends like that, and then she brings up the whole thing with her and Stevie. Now, <clears throat> Here's my thing, and, and again, I like to throw little nuggets in there when I can. But you got to realize, you don't sow seeds of discord. That, like I said, you sow that seed, you're going, you will reap that harvest that you are sowing. That person will reap it too. They sit here and let you put a battery in their motherfucking back. But you're going to reap that shit too. In addition to that, you know what I'm saying? It's like, a, again, the hole that you're digging, you got to dig one for yourself because that shit is going to, in some way, shape, or form, blow up. Because regardless of what Stevie has with Jocelyn, regardless of that, the fact that you purposely, it's one thing to sit here and sit back and want, want the shit to unfold and the old girl to go in and fuck the shit up. God, it's another thing to sit here and purposely try to push her in there to divide that relationship. It's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to you. But anyway, talk about Stevie. Old girl says that she met with Stevie the first time they talked. She was the only artist. Now, Josh is going to be on there, but he's not working with her. Someone else is. His attention is solely going to be her. They're not missing, missing with pleasure. Mimi doesn't believe it, but hopes that he does because, again, she's a better fit for him than Jocelyn. How would you know that? But it's more or less that she wants to stick it to Jocelyn any way that she can. Okay, whatever. And at some point, they're going to hang out. Carly going to be along. We're going to see how that shit works. Now, Carly and Caesar, Carly is having a sexy breath. And what I didn't mention before, I really, I really don't care about her and her sex life, especially when being. She's beautiful for how old she is, but she old. But she ain't gave, she ain't gave up the goodies and shit. Okay, she ain't gave up the goodies. But um, they sit down, and he mentions how, okay, well, you know, why is that I see a video of you with your ex? Well, what's, what's, what's good with that? And, you know, he pretty much let her know, like, yeah, I'm looking stupid and foolish in these streets. She says that he popped up, and with him popping up, hey, you know, all I wanted was an apology, and I got it. And he was like, well, why does the apology of your ex matter? So she gives him this whole, oh, I needed that to, you know, assure me that not all men are bad, hence you. And he looked at you, and he kind of gave her that, miss me with the bullshit. <laughs> Which I laugh, I'm just like, good, he didn't fall for it. And he even said that he didn't like the fact that, like, he, well, one, he was like, when he was there, you should have let me know that, a hey, old boy just popped up. I shouldn't have to find out. And now, you know, getting the whole backpedaling pussy pop James Cowell type shit going on. And then he even says he felt some kind of way about showing up to the grand opening her knowing that she invited her ex, but she didn't tell him and that whole thing and the whole plan, get back this and the third. He even said that he's trying things differently. Trying things differently with her, but, you know, pretty much accepted her apology. Hopefully this is the last time that shit gonna happen. I cannot fucking wait. Okay, okay, okay. So it seems like Black and Green Chicago gonna be good, but we know about a preview sometimes. Shit ain't, but I can't wait to fucking see it. But back to this shit, too. So, Rye goes ahead and questions Jasmine. We not finna go with the back for hoopla, but he pretty much told her the dead this situation. You gotta take a DNA test and make sure that he ain't the pappy. And more than likely we're gonna find the shit out of the reunion that he ain't the pappy. Whatever. Moving forward. So Dom is having a listening party. Her whole thing is since um Tammy had one, she would get back on her music. So she has a listening party and it is during now bit now when um I said that Mimi and Estelita, is that her name? Estel yeah, whatever her name is. 
we're going I kind of like have fun meet up it's at this actual event and it was more for to meet with Carly but she Mimi brings up the protective order thing and how she went to try to file one but the um but the uh judge pretty, pretty much said that in order to do this that they need Eva there to speak on or well, I guess to kind of verify everything and now she's trying to figure out if she really wants to involve her, her daughter in this whole legality situation. We shall see. Now, as Salita comes in and Carly uh, wants to apologize to her. Now, first and foremost, come on, y'all. We're going to do real grown-up shit. Apology. A, let me talk to you over here. Let's get away from everybody, everything. Because, again, shit can go left and whatnot. This is love and hippity hop. And she pretty much apologizes. And rather than ask Alita to just take it, she want to know, okay, well, what was up with the attitude? Why did you give me the attitude at your um, event? And she was like, okay, well, it seems like every time Stevie J has a brand new artist, things happen. I'm somehow, like, I feel like I'm always in the middle and things go left. Now, ask Alita did bring up a good fucking point, which I was going to say it as Carly was saying her shit. And it was one, now, she was like, why does it matter who... Steve is working with this and third, and if you are in the middle, it's because you put yourself in the middle, and either A, the truth hurt to be a Carly ready to turn up, so I believe she threw a drink, and then it went off from there. Mm-hmm. There we go. Alright, so, who is it? So, it wasn't, a, I think it was a drink, but I guess it was also vegetables. Too much shit going on. But, as the leader... <laughs> Pretty much says, um, all you do is jump from dick to dick, you old bitch. I'm just like, well, well, all right, tell it how the fuck it really is. And she pretty much made it clear that every time I see you, bitch, we're gonna have a problem. So, pretty much, it's one of those. What, what is her name it, from Black Ink Crew? Was it Sky? Whoever the fuck it is that got into it with our Riley, pretty much told the bitch on site. So it, this seems like one of those on-site type things. Uh, Mimi goes outside with Esalita and her friend. I can't think of her damn friend name right now. They talk. It don't really fucking matter because it really don't fucking matter. And now we have the scene where uh, Stevie J meets with his daughter. Pretty much telling that, hey, look, she proposed. They're like, look, if you fucking go through with this shit, we done. Whatever. Jobs is on her way and her holding will... He's a grown ass man, so he can make his own decisions, which is true. And even though, and here's the thing, they are out of the house. So this is one of those where his kids are already grown, so he really does not have to, uh, how can I say this, write anything by them. And again, his kids are already grown. But hey, it's one of those where his daughters are going to be there. And in the event that shit don't work out between them, when he gets an older age, who's going to take care of him? It ain't going to, it really ain't going to be Jocelyn. Even if they stay together and they both reach old age, who's going to take care of him? It's going to be his children. So their opinions do matter. And the fact that, you know, she drug the baby into it and shit went so fucking left, they're protective of their fucking sisters. So hopefully, Jocelyn can understand seeing that's how she has a baby. But she been the same trying to give us these fake fucking tears she gave fucking Mimi. So we're going to see how this shit play out. So the episode ends with uh, Jocelyn apologizes to the girls and more or less the eldest girl. And, you know, she says that there is no justification for what she did. She was childish, all these other things. And um, she begins to cry and e equates pretty much saying that he does a lot of shit to me. The fact I had an abortion, that was him. Which it wasn't him, that was you. He may have given you an ultimatum, but ultimately, no man can make you do it. Um, he ain't have a gun in your head, so he didn't make you do shit. That is something that you chose to do, a sacrifice that you pretty much chose to have. It, it is what the fuck it is. And she's trying to do the tears, the elders, I don't know what name. But she pretty, and it's, this is one of those where, I don't really know what this is fucking put on. Because it's one of those where she was getting butt, And I know some of those, uh, you know, gestures and whatnot. And pretty much let know. I don't give a fuck about your tears. Because, like I said, I would never bring my youngest sister, your daughter, into this shit. So I don't understand why the fuck you brought my sister into it. And it was one of those where shit 
went was going left real fucking fast. And this is one of those where, in the grand scheme of things, all is fair in love and war. All is fucking fair in love and war. But at the same exact time, there is that collateral damage, and there are, you know, there is the um, the uh, strap and all the other stuff. So the fact that she was just trying to hurt Stevie J, she heard other people in the process and daughter got up ready to sit here and whoop that ass, but security came in. Johnson is asking production, did y'all make her do this? Did y'all make her do this? And she even said to her, you can't whoop me. And it's just like, uh, you ain't a spring chicken no motherfucking more. And you, I mean, you might have some snapback, but you ain't got all that snapback. And I'm pretty sure that girl could probably put a hurt on you. And you see, and here's the thing, you see, I don't think it had nothing to do with that being Stevie J's daughter. I think it had everything to do with she knew that she couldn't have this, so she didn't get up. But y'all let me know what y'all think. That's all I got. I'm sitting here watch. I'm just going to watch the basketball holes. I ain't going to do a fucking review. I, I can't. I can't. Not tonight. Not the fuck tonight. I got other shit to do, and I'm late on fucking doing laundry. Got to be up in the morning. I know y'all don't fucking care, but I'm just saying. But that's it. Full review. Hope y'all enjoy it. Rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I will see you guys later. Holla at your boy. Peace.